welcome back to Aaron McCarthy. I'm live on Bowen. Solving the world's greatest mysteries that are relevant only to himself, it's Dilrook Jai Singer with Dilrook's Dilemmas. Thanks, fatso. <laughs> Barkeep. Sorry, your cocktail's coming up in two secs, sweetie. Uh, cocktails, my favorite combination of two things. Getting tail and alcohol. Uh, look, just clarifying, I, I, am, a, I am a straight man. Um, well, straight so far, I've always been attracted to women, but you just, sometimes you never know. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm 100% certain I'm straight, right? But recently I have been kissing a few boys. Uh, when I say boys, I mean consenting male adults. Um, <laughs> 100%, I mean, that doesn't make you gay, right? <laughs> I'm 100% certain I'm straight. Look, I'm 90% certain I'm straight. I, I just, just really like pleasing people. Um, 80%. There's no need to get uncomfortable, sir. I'm not going to come and kiss you, right? It's fine. You're way below my league. I would be batting far under my average. Like, oh, I'm not going to be the Hugh Jackman to your Deborah Lee Furnace. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Like, you're a good-looking man, fair enough, but I'm on telly. Um, <laughs> admittedly, the community TV, but you're an audience member on that show, so. <laughs> Look, what I think it is, is I like to think of myself as a progressive, open-minded man who is 70% certainly straight. <laughs> but I had a conservative upbringing when I was taught all these things about homosexuality that I've since learned are false. So nowadays, I feel really guilty that those early life lessons may still have an impact on me. Like, you know how homophobic people often harbor homoerotic feelings they don't know how to deal with, so they act out aggressively? I think I'm worried that I'm the opposite. I'm worried that deep down I harbor homophobia, so to counter that bigotry, I'm tonguing dudes left, right, and center. <laughs> Just to... But seriously, think about it. All the insecure guys you know who are always overcompensating, they're going, oh, mate, I love chicks and boobs and boobs with chicks and chicks without <laughs> boobs and clearly hiding something, right? On the opposite end of the spectrum, I'm so scared of being a homophobe that I talk up how comfortable I am with gay people. I overdo it. I'm like, yeah, man, whatever. I'll kiss a guy, love it. You know, just penis, scrot, and blah, 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 just mash it in there. <laughs> Look. I think the reason I'm so comfortable talking about my sexuality is not only because I'm 40% certain I'm straight, but also... <laughs> but also because I know the effect of, that women have on me. Like, as hard as it to believe, I wasn't always the Lothario you see tonight. Uh, <laughs> when I first came to Australia, I wasn't equipped to talk to girls. To give you an idea of how awkward I was, I'll tell you a story about this one particular crazy party at uni. It was insane, right? Like, all these international students and backpackers and foreign exchange students were all hooking up with each other. It was like a United Nations shag fest, right? <laughs> It's true, like the Japanese guy was hooking up with the black American girl, but then she left him with the American guy, who was previously with the Swedish guy, and like the Indian girl, all these nationalities hooked up with each other, not one of them came near the shy Sri Lankan. <laughs> I know, right? Dirty racists. But <laughs> I did get the courage to go up to one girl and start flirting. Her name was Emma, and I like walked up to her, and I was like, ah, oh, you know Emma, because uh, your name is Emma and my name is Dill. If we ever had a kid together, we could call it Dilemma. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> See how embarrassing that is? That's how the effect of women have on me. That's the impact. That's why I know how it feels, and I'm comfortable with who I am. And then, you know, kissing a couple of guys here and there doesn't make you gay. Like, seriously, let me show you. Barkeep. Mate. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, fine. Look, I'll show you here. Still PG. I guess that's the real reason why Rob left the show. <laughs> Tastes like lollipops. Um, I, I think we'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dilruk Jaisinger, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear those claps? Can you hear that laughter? Oh, <laughs> that laughter. That could be you. That's right. You could be part of our live studio audience, and here's how you could do it. Are you bored, lonely, or staring aimlessly out the window wondering why you've got no friends? <laughs> well, we can't help you with friends, but come on down to RMIT University and be part of the Live on Bowen studio audience. Email us at audience at liveonbowen.com. Book your tickets and you'll never have to be lonely again. It is now 
time for this week's instalment of World's Worst Game Show! <laughs> OK. <laughs> this week, we're playing a round of Amnesia. I'm going to ask the contestants, Dilroy, Cayman and Michael, a series of questions, and then... I forget what comes next. <laughs> uh, these questions are based on their own personal history. The aim is to get it right. If they get it wrong, that's amnesia. <laughs> First question goes to Heyman. Okay, Heyman, for yep. 10 points, what was the inspiration behind your parents naming you Heyman? Ha, huh, that's easy. Uh, one time, Mum and Dad were driving past a, a strawberry farm and they saw a scarecrow, you know, like a man made of hay. So they thought, hey, man, awesome. That's easy, next. That's amnesia! Uh, I'm afraid that's the incorrect answer. The correct answer was... How about we just hear it from Heyman's mum herself? Oh, hey mum. Yes, Aaron. Hi there. Hello. Actually, the real answer is that uh, years ago, my husband and I, we went on a holiday up to the Wit Sundays and um, we fell in love with Heyman Island and it's actually where our little girl was conceived, so we decided to name her Heyman. So every time we looked at her, we could remember back to that heady, erotic weekend, just tearing each other's clothes off. And... That's disgusting! <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? I'm burning him! Oh, sorry, darling. Don't forget <laughs> Sunday lunch. Okay. Bye for now. Love you. <laughs> Next question is for Michael. Uh, Michael, at some point in your adult life, you befriended a group of kids whom you became very close with. In which town did you first meet these kids? Uh, that would be my hometown of Gladysdale. That's amnesia! <laughs> you met these kids in Hoddles Creek, Victoria. Aren't they gorgeous? Let's have a look at the picture of them there. Lots of kids. It's very popular with the kids. Michael Connell loves the ladies and loves the kids. <laughs> yeah. Dilrook, next question for 10 points. Dilrook, when you were a man, when you were a man, <laughs> when, you were a, when you were a young man living in Sri Lanka, did you or did you not drink responsibly? Dilruk? I have never touched alcohol. Let's cut to the photo, people. <laughs> Dilruk Joseph, does that look like responsible drinking right there? You should be ashamed. Dilruk, that is amnesia. <laughs> All right, question four, back to Heyman, back to Heyman. Answer this, what happened to your cherished childhood pet, Fluffy the bunny rabbit? Oh, Fluffy went to live with um, Nana on the farm. Hey, man, that is amnesia. <laughs> Here's what really happened to Fluffy. Roll the package That's there. so innocent. You can take that fake apology and shove it right up your hairy... <laughs> Aaron, Fluffy didn't know Lindsay Lohan. OK. <laughs> That's just a, 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 a movie dramatisation. She was roadkill, Heyman. That's, ex <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> Sorry about that, Heyman. But yes, she did also know Lindsay Lohan. Um, <laughs> Michael, for 10 points, when you were in first grade, what song was playing on the radio when you peed your pants on the bus? That would be Empire State of Mind by Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> I was about 20 in first grade. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's not what I've got written here. Yeah, Michael, time. that's amnesia. <laughs> Let's go to the music clip for the correct answer. Somebody get the man of buckets! Okay. Okay. Final question is for Dill. Dill, this is to win the game. All right, hit me. Yeah, good crowd participation. <laughs> Dill Rook, do you like to dress up as Santa Claus and kiss men? This is for the title. Only in July. Let's see if he's correct, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Dilruk Jaisinger, the winner of Amnesia, ladies and gentlemen, is Michael Cuddle! Yes. So, Dil, maybe next time you'll think twice before calling me fat so. We couldn't afford slow motion. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that was Amnesia. Our comedian this evening is an up-and-coming talent who has been described as a vastly cheekier Jerry Seinfeld. We are very happy to have him here with us tonight. Please give him a hand. It's Tony Besselink. Uh, 
Hi everyone. Hey everyone. Hope you're all uh, going well. I've uh, lately I've been trying to decide whether or not animals or humans actually have better lives. Like I've tried to work out all the perks I enjoy about being a human. I've really only come up with two things, right? The thing I enjoy the most about being a human is that it is highly unlikely I'll get eaten after sex. <laughs> like that, I think, is a really big benefit. I mean, like, I, I think a lot of men sort of take that for granted. So I'm going to be the one to say, ladies, thanks for not devouring us for sustenance. <laughs> You know, you girls are a lot better than spiders. Uh, but the other thing I like about being a human is that unlike animals, we actually do things with our lives. Like, look at all the things we've accomplished that animals will never achieve. I mean, we created art, right? But not only did we create art, we are the most efficient at art. Like, it would, they say an infinite amount of monkeys would write the works of Shakespeare. It took us one guy. <laughs> like, whoever he was, he kicked an infinite amount of monkeys' asses. <laughs> Like, we're just so much better. I think art is amazing. I love that someone can create something which makes people feel so many different things. You know, like, art can make us feel sad. Like, when a painting falls off a wall and kills someone. Like, <laughs> that is some deep art. That is thought-provoking, right? Uh, but I think uh, we all mostly write art just to sleep with each other. Like, that's why I wrote these jokes. But, uh, I mean, look, Wagner wrote a symphony for his wife. Like, Eric Clapton wrote Layla for George Harrison's wife. Uh, <laughs> Van Gogh actually cut off his ear and gave it to a prostitute, and surprisingly, that's the most romantic of the three, right? Because <laughs> if you think about it, having a song written for you is nice, but it doesn't tell you anything, because there's no limit to how many amazing songs an artist can write. Like, Clapton could have written a thousand different songs for a thousand different women. But when Van Gogh gave his ear to that prostitute, essentially what he was saying was, Honey, you're in the top two. <laughs> What I've done for you, I can only do one more time, so you'll never be worse than second place. Like, now that, I think, is romantic, surely. Um, so, I, I think one of the other greatest things we've ever done, we've had a lot of scientific achievements, uh, I think the greatest thing we've done is we discovered cake. <laughs> Like, how the hell did we discover cake, right? And I say discover, because there's no way we invented cake, right? Because an invention implies you know what the end result is going to be. And a cake looks nothing like the ingredients that go into making a cake, right? You know what we were smart enough to invent? Salad. Salad is an invention, cake is a discovery. And here's how you tell the difference. <laughs> If you took a salad back in time, before anyone had ever seen a salad, and you showed it to someone, they could still reverse engineer the process of how to make a salad. <laughs> right? They would look at you and go, clearly you've just put lettuce and tomato in a bowl. Like, <laughs> well done, is this the wonders of the future we have to look forward to? But if you went and took a cake back in time and showed it to someone who'd never seen a cake before, they wouldn't have a clue where to start. You know, they would look at them and go, well, clearly this is just made of cake. <laughs> Like, that's all it is. I'm breaking it open, there's just more cake inside. Like, there's nothing else here but cake. Like, you have a new natural element here. We need to add this to the periodic table. Like, bunch it up, put it next to boron or something. I don't know. Like, this is amazing. And now uh, that's all I got, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been wonderful. Thank you, Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with music from July Day to watching live on Bali.